White Castle was the first ever fast food restaurant in the world, and they shaped the fast food industry as we know it today. But what you probably don't know is that it all started by one simple accident that the founder of White Castle made. Meet Walter Anderson, the founder of White Castle, which is probably better known as the first ever fast food restaurant in the world. And the craziest part is that it all started by a simple accident. Or that's what my parents tell me at least. But this simple accident shaped the entirety of America's fast food industry into what it currently is. And it caused the fast food industry to become one of the largest industries out there and it is now worth over 800 billion dollars. So it's safe to say that today will be a hell of a ride, as I tell you how this massive industry got started through a simple mistake, and to completely understand this, it's important to know how White Castle even got started. Walter Anderson opened his first diner using a converted streetcar in 1916 in good old Wichita, but do you know what he sold? That's right, turtles, no hamburgers, but the way he started making patties was actually an accident. He got so mad that his meatballs kept sticking to the grill that he smashed them with a spatula and there you go flat patty but he didn't stop experimenting after this he realized that starting with a fresh amount of beef pressing it into a flat square and poking five well-placed holes in the meat meant easier and faster cooking for the patties he also thought of cooking these patties differently. He chopped onions, laid them flat on the grill, and on top of the bed of onions, he laid the square beef patties with five holes, letting them cook from the steam. On top of these patties were buns to absorb the oniony, beefy steam. And the results? Extra juicy patties in smoked buns. Sounds good. It seems that Anderson has led a life with one primary purpose, to innovate. Right now, you know that the flat patty came from Anderson's nice little mad incident, but it turns out that he's going to have a lot of happy, purposeful incidents that will begin a whole new industry of burgers. I'll tell you more about this later, but let's continue with the story. So his burgers became so popular that in just a few years, he could expand his burger stands to a few more until he had enough money to finally build his proper shop. And then in 1921, he met Billy Ingram, who was at that time an insurance and real estate man. They got along well and founded the restaurant chain White Castle in Wichita. They used Anderson's recipe and cooking style and sold it at 5 cents each and called them sliders as they were small and went down so easily. But did you know that the two started their business with only $700? It's not a lot today and definitely wasn't an ambitious amount a few decades ago, especially if you're trying to start a business. But lo and behold, the two persevered. They built their first White Castle shop and at that time, it only sold four items on the menu. Hamburgers, Coca-Cola, coffee, and apple pie. I know it doesn't sound special by today's standards, but you gotta cut them some slack. It was the first hamburger chain in the USA, and in this venture, the two had a lot of firsts together, which might sound dodgy, but what I mean to say is that they pioneered many things that are still well adapted in the industry today. Anyways, Anderson developed a visible assembly line kitchen, and it's the first time it was ever heard of or seen because it's a very uncommon practice to show how everything is done from start to finish to the customers. Although at this time, Anderson and Ingram thought it was a need. They needed to prove that their ground beef was clean to counter the negative effects of Upton Sinclair's The Jungle, which publicized the poor sanitation practices of the meatpacking industry of that time. The customers got worried that eating hamburgers was dangerous to their health, so they just had to show the process to debunk this misconception. However, they didn't stop there though. They needed to convince many people that eating ground beef is okay and that it's addictingly delicious. So the two men decided to focus on food safety, which was uncommon and ahead of its time. Cleanliness and transparency became their thing. They wanted to portray that everything about them from preparation to the food they serve is immaculate. They already thought of this initially as they decided White and Castle to be their brand's names. White means purity, Castle means solidity, not too bad, eh? Apart from the name, everything turned white and sparkling clean. The restaurant has white porcelain enamel on steel exteriors. And the employees? Well, their uniforms were spotless. Even their kitchen is viewable by the public, so every misconception about their food will be resolved immediately. All things are sanitary, and this has become their trademark. 
But before we move on, here's a quick fun fact. The castle-like shape of their first White Castle shop was inspired by the castle-like look of the water tower in downtown Chicago. Yes, this one. I just thought I'd let you know. So before White Castle, there was nothing to pattern their systems. They had to innovate and part of their innovations was to create centralized bakeries, meat supply plants and warehouses for White Castle's use. I think the only two things they didn't do were grow their own wheat and raise their cows. And you know what happens to innovators when they're successful in their ventures? Yeah, they get imitated. Many imitators found the idea of White Castle as a new opportunity to start their food business ventures. Many wannabes intentionally created consumer confusion from their restaurant's architectural structure to their names. Examples are Little Castle, White Cabin, White Cap, White Hut, Blue Castle, King's Castle, and many more. But not everyone who tried to imitate White Castle put up a good fight. Most of them aren't even in business anymore. It's difficult to keep up with the leader in an industry they started. And because of their many firsts in this industry, White Castle was credited as the first fast food hamburger chain in the world. Eat that. It's also going to be more difficult if you only follow the Pioneer's Trail. And White Castle did a lot of thinking outside of the box for their marketing, of which molded how fast food marketing is done today. And I'll tell you more about that in the next chapter. Not too long after Walter and Billy joined forces to build White Castle, Ingram bought out Anderson's share of the business and moved White Castle to Columbus. From this point forward, he handled the marketing of White Castle. He was known to have the marketing gene, and it was through his inventive marketing style that the fast food industry became well known. White Castle spread like mushrooms in the Midwest and on the East Coast, followed by millions of loyal supporters who loved their delicious and affordable burgers. The restaurant was so popular that it was the first fast food brand to sell 1 billion burgers in its time. To do this, White Castle or Ingram had to do a lot of genius marketing. Even after people started to enjoy ground beef burgers, others were so bitter they couldn't let folks be happy. An author even went as far as to slander the burgers. Ingram responded in the form of a scientific experiment. Ingram asked a biochemist to conduct a scientific experiment where one person eats only White Castle sliders and water for 13 weeks. It's like a prequel to Supersize Me. However, it's still shocking that this was even allowed. This subject was an excited medical student, and in one sitting, he ate 10 sliders. He continued this diet for 13 weeks, documenting his journey in a diary. Oh my god, this is Supersize Me. Anyways, the cards played well for Ingram, as the fellow was healthy after eating 20 to 24 burgers a day. Holy God, good God, that's crazy. I mean, I love burgers, but this is way too much. But Ingram was definitely a dedicated guy. He even published the results in his campaigns, and overall, it positively affected the hamburger's reputation, resulting in more sales for White Castle. White Castle was also the first to offer restaurant coupons. It pioneered the first use of restaurant newspaper coupons, offering a carryout order of five hamburgers for 10 cents. Oh, the good old days. This was during the Great Depression, so this offer was a hit. Yeah, the Great Depression. That's what I call an average Saturday night. But not only did it help popularize White Castle, it also helped other restaurants make sales by adopting this type of marketing. Today, coupons are still used, not only in the food business, but in other industries as well. At the same time, the couponing system was invented and White Castle's subsidiary paper line was established. And it's where they make paper supplies for restaurant use and hats for the kitchen workers, all made famous by White Castle. And because of these little white hats, White Castle etched a permanent mark in their customers' minds. And due to popular demand, paper line was able to supply restaurants worldwide and produce over 42 million paper hats for many companies. From newspapers to hats and even a movie, yes, White Castle starred in a film. And if you want to search for the movie that made White Castle the late night destination for stoners, search for Harold and Kumar, go to White Castle. It's a banger. But what's even better are those boxes of burgers. Because have you noticed the multiple burgers sold in boxes that you can see today in some fast food restaurants? Well, White Castle was the real OG there. White Castle sold its sandwiches in Crave Clutch or Crave Case boxes containing 20 or 30 hamburgers. Pretty neat, eh? That's not even the real deal. White Castle anticipated group cravings, so it offered a Crave Crate containing 100 burgers. 
This brand was also the first to offer its products in grocery stores. Because if you can't find a White Castle restaurant near you, you might as well check the frozen section of your local supermarket. Just thaw and reheat. You might not get the best experience, but at least you can somewhat taste the original. White Castle pioneered many strategies. In fact, the business pioneered a whole industry. White Castle pioneered everything from the kitchen assembly line to never-before-seen marketing techniques and the hamburgers themselves. But you might be wondering why this fast food company is not as big as the leading fast food brands like McDonald's or Burger King. And just because you've been so patient, I'll tell you why. So, there are only 342 White Castle outlets in the United States, and they're mostly scattered in the Midwest, Kentucky, and Tennessee. Compare this to the leading fast food brand McDonald's, which has around 38,000 locations worldwide. The difference is astounding. But believe it or not, White Castle remained a small group not because it was unpopular with the general public. It's because its system is different, and White Castle's predecessors are keen on keeping it that way. Since the beginning, White Castle has been a family-owned business. Today, the 101-year-old restaurant chain is run by Ingram's great-granddaughter, Lisa Ingram, who acts as president and CEO. And even if they are left behind by the growth of those who followed them, the Ingram family is strong on their stand that White Castle will not be franchised or licensed further to anyone. The reason? They lack control over the brand their great-grandfather worked so hard to establish. Besides, the Ingram family is getting crazy rich from this business model. So it isn't all so bad, right? I think it's a win-win, especially for the giants in the industry. If White Castle remains close-knit and doesn't look for further expansion, then McDonald's and Burger King can sit back and chill as the band leader remains conservative. And for those here who benefited from that simple incident caused by the rage of a cook, it's a win. Imagine if Anderson didn't pour his frustrations out on a beef patty. But if it weren't for anger, then who would have started the fast food industry that we all love to hate and hate to love today? So now you understand the complete story about the success of White Castle and how they shaped the fast food industry in the US. And keep in mind that this wouldn't be possible if those little accidents didn't happen in the early days. Pretty crazy how life can unfold like that.